So hi everyone and welcome to this video on various examples on finding the convergence limit or the asymptotic limit of various uh, expressions. And uh, we're going to go through a couple of examples such as we can reinforce the theories we've learned so far. So our main example will be it's going to be four items. Okay, so we're going to go through each one of them. And um, uh, for all four items, consider the sequence x1 to xn, right? And it's drawn from a normal distribution with an unknown mean, but a known variance, the variance being equal to one. And we're just going to be focusing on the sample mean xn bar, okay? So we're going to answer four questions, which are finding the convergence limit of various expressions. So the first one, which is the simplest one, is find the convergence limit of x bar n as n approaches infinity. Well, we know that by the weak okay, law of large numbers, right? Since uh, mu is the mean and variance is one, which is less than infinity, it's a finite variance, then x bar n converges in probability, right? Converges in probability to mu, right? And that's the convergence limit. It just converges to mu. So just to recall, right? According to the weak law of large numbers, our very first theorem, right? Uh, if we consider a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables with some mean and finite variance, then the mean converges, uh, the sample mean will converge to the true uh, mean in probability, right? As n approaches infinity, right? So that's the weak law of large numbers, okay? Next, we find the convergence limit of square root of n times xn minus mu as n approaches infinity. So in here, okay, uh, we know, whoops, sorry. So since, uh, sigma squared is equal to one, right? So this just implies that sigma is also equal to one. So um, by, we're gonna use now by the central limit theorem, central limit theorem, right? Uh, we know that square root of n times uh, x n bar minus mu over sigma converges to a standard normal, right? converges to a standard normal, but sigma is equal to one, right? In this case, we know our variance. So that's just gonna reduce to in distribution, that's just gonna reduce to square root of n times x bar n minus mu divided by one. So that's just that converges in distribution to a normal, a standard normal in fact. And that's the answer for that. So let's just box the answers. There you go. So that one's pretty simple. Just to recall, the central limit theorem, which is this theorem, just states that if we have a sequence, be again, IID random variables with some mean mu and variance, sigma squared again, finite variance, then this uh, expression must be true, square root of n being the normalizing factor, so it does not degenerate to the mean. So we have square root of n times x bar n minus mu over sigma is, uh, converges in distribution to a standard norm. So that's the central limit theorem, okay? Next, so we have x bar n squared plus uh, x bar n, right? So, well, we know already, so we know by number one, right? We know that um, x bar n converges in probability to mu, right? And that's by the weak law of large numbers, WLLN, right? And uh, by the weak, since it's true by the weak law of large numbers, what we can do is we can take a function of those two forms there. So we put a G function into it. So uh, by the continuous mapping theorem, so if we make it, uh, uh, if we sort of scale it by a continuous function, so say a square function, so we have that x bar n squared will converge to the other side in probability to mu squared, right? So that's something that we know. 
by continuous mapping theorem. Then lastly, we apply Slutsky theorem by the Slutsky theorem. theorem. We know that we can just add, okay? So we know that x bar n squared plus x bar n, okay? will converge in probability since both of these converge in probability to uh, mu squared, which is the limit of this one, plus mu, which is the limit of just x bar n. And that's the answer for this particular case. That's it, quite simple. So just to recall what continuous mapping theorem and the Slutsky theorem are. So by continuous mapping theorem, again, if we have uh, here a sequence that converges in probability to x, then a function of that sequence will also converge in probability to a function of x. And the same is true on the distribution level. So if we have a sequence uh, that converges in distribution to x, then a function of that sequence will also uh, converge in distribution to the sequence, uh, to the function of x, right? Then Slutsky theorem is basically an application of the limit theorems. So if if um, x bar, uh, I'm sorry, like a, a sequence x n converges in distribution to some x, and uh, y n converges in probability to some constant, then if I multiply it, it will converge in distribution to the product of the two limits. If uh, I add the two, it will converge in distribution to the sum of the two limits. And if I divide it to, it will uh, converge in distribution to the quotient of the two limits. And note the weaker form of, um, of convergence, in which in this case is the converges in distribution, dominates the stronger form, which is the uh, converges in probability. So from here, okay, so we can apply that again in the last number, right? So we already know what the Oops, sorry. We already know what this one converges to. Again, that was number two. So we know by CLT that um, square root of n times x bar n minus mu converges in distribution okay, to a standard normal, right? And then we know uh, that by the weak law of large numbers, again, I sound like a broken record, that x bar n okay, converges in probability to uh, uh, mu, right? Then by continuous mapping theorem, uh, x bar n squared, which is again a squaring function, converges in probability to mu squared. Then lastly, by Slutsky theorem, by Slutsky theorem, we know that um, square root of n times x bar n minus mu. If I multiply that to x bar n squared, so think of this as like a xn in the notation, and this is like yn in what we had in this notation earlier, we're taking the product of the two. So by Slutsky theorem, they will converge in the weaker form of, of convergence, which is by distribution, to the product of the two limits. So, well, the product of the two limits, so we know that this one converges, the, the first one converges in distribution to n, 0, 1, right? And then this one converges in probability to mu squared. But again, we take the weaker form of convergence, so that's mu squared over here. And then the whole thing we know will converge in distribution. So here, x bar n squared converges in distribution to n, zero mu to the fourth, right? And this is the convergence limit of that last one. So thank you for your attention and for sticking by the whole video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.